Good morning. I'm Steve Mesrobian from the Armenian National Committee of America Eastern Region Board of Directors, and I would like to thank all of you for joining us this morning in these uncertain and not too long ago unimaginable times. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have been forced to change tactics to commemorate the one and a half million victims of the Armenian Genocide of 1915 to 1923. Instead of gathering together in person, we will be watching from our phones and our computers this year as one connected community. 105 years has not dulled the pain the Armenian nation feels as a result of this great crime committed against our ancestors in the Ottoman Empire. Justice may mean different things to each of you, but there is a common theme for the ANCA Eastern Region. We will work day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year for Haitad. Successive generations will step up to take the torch for justice for the Armenian nation. We will not rest until we have a full, frank, and unambiguous recognition of the Armenian genocide by the Republic of Turkey. We demand reparations be paid to Armenia and the return of our historic lands. We also fight for the self-determination of Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh in Armenian. Today, you will hear from some of our closest friends in the United States Congress, from other ethnic groups, and organizations who stand, stand alongside us in this fight, and from some of our other Armenian community organizations. I hope you are able to join the Armenian National Committee of America Eastern Region as we undertake an ambitious and unprecedented three days of Armenian Genocide commemorative activities this year. Our first congressional message is from Senator Robert Menendez, who is the senior senator from New Jersey. Senator Menendez has been a staunch advocate for justice for the Armenian Genocide since he took office in 2006. Senator Menendez serves as the ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He is also a member of the Senate Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs Committee, as well as the Senate Finance Committee. In late 2019, he vowed to continue introducing SRES 150, the US Senate's version of the Armenian Genocide Resolution until it passed. The historic resolution passed the Senate unanimously on December 12, 2019. I'm honored to join everyone in New Jersey and around the world in commemorating the 105th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. I've been proud to lead the resolution affirming the facts of the Armenian Genocide, and I'm especially proud that last December, after years of work, the resolution in the Senate passed by unanimous consent. This historic milestone would never have been accomplished without the support and commitment of the Armenian American community. This year, the administration should follow the Senate's lead in recognizing this tragedy as what it was, a genocide. Acknowledging the truth of this genocide is necessary to prevent it from happening again, and I call on President Trump to join us as we work to place real meaning in the words, never again. Thank you, Senator Menendez. Our next message is from Senator Chuck Schumer. Senator Schumer was elected to the U.S. Senate in 1998 and became a senior senator in 2000 representing New York State. As Democratic leader, Senator Schumer does not serve on any committees. Most recently, he, was, he served as ranking member of the Committee on Rules and Administration on the Senate Judiciary Committee as ranking member of the Subcommittee on Immigration, Refugees, and Border Security the Senate Finance Committee, and Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs. I say to one and all gathered, Parev, today we remember the victims of the Armenian Genocide and their descendants. So many of you watching this virtual commemoration, I'm always there in person every year, but of course this year we're doing it virtually, but so many of you are who are watching, parents, grandparents, great aunts, great uncles, relatives of all kinds, who were slaughtered during the Mets Yegher. We remember their stories. They are imprinted in our memory and the memory of good people throughout the world. So today and every day, I stand with you in labeling this atrocity for exactly what it was, genocide. The Turks tried to wipe out the Armenian people. Thank God they failed. But we, those alive, Armenian and non-Armenian alike, must never never forget. That's why last December I was proud to sponsor, along with my colleague from across the river, Senator Menendez, Senate Resolution 150, 
to finally recognize the Armenian genocide as a matter of U.S. policy. We got tremendous pressure from the Turkish government not to do it. Too bad. The truth is the truth. Today, there are 1.5 million Armenian Americans living proudly, prosperously, many of them, from Bayside to Los Angeles. They are great Americans, leaders in their community, and proud to be of both Armenian heritage and, as, and American citizens. What better proof that the Armenian nation has persevered no matter what their enemies tried to do to them? So I say to all of you, thank you. Together, we must never, ever forget. Thank you, Senator Schumer. Our next statement is from Representative Frank Pallone, who represents New Jersey's 6th District. Congressman Pallone is in his 16th full term in the U.S. House of Representatives. He has been co-chair of the Armenian Congressional Caucus on Armenian Issues since its inception in 1995. He has been a true champion on Armenian, issue, on Armenian issues during his tenure in the House of Representatives. Hi, I'm Congressman Frank Pallone. I want to thank the Armenian National Committee for once again joining with me to commemorate uh, the Armenian Genocide. Uh, it's 105 years uh, this time for the commemoration, and I, I'm pleased with the fact that so many of you helped us pass the uh, recognition resolution in Congress and the House and the Senate last year. Even though we can't be together in person to commemorate the genocide, we can still do this virtually, and it's important that we work together to commemorate it uh, one more time. Thank you, Representative Pallone. I also have the honor of introducing my own senator from Rhode Island, Senator Jack Reed. Senator Reed is the senior senator from Rhode Island who has been one of the staunchest advocates on Armenian issues over the past 23 years. Senator Reed is the ranking member on the Senate Armed Services Committee and also serves on the Senate Appropriations Committee, where he is the ranking member on the Appropriations Subcommittee on Transportation, Housing, and Urban Development. Senator Reed has visited both Armenia and Artsakh during his tenure in the Senate. Parev, paregam Hello, friends. Today, we recognize the 105th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Although we cannot be together, we are united in our belief for a better future for Armenians throughout the world. More than a century ago, the young Turks under the Ottoman Empire began a campaign of oppression and genocide. By 1923, it is estimated that over one and one half million Armenians had been killed and millions were exiled. However, the survivors of the Armenian genocide persevered and went on to contribute so much to communities throughout the world. They went on to enrich the lands that they inhabited, communities across the globe, but particularly here in the United States. In Rhode Island, we have a proud Armenian American community that remains strong and has contributed so much to the success of this state and this nation. By recognizing the Armenian genocide, we are educating the world and we are helping to prevent a further unspeakable outbreak of violence of this type. This is a battle not just for Armenians, but for all of humanity. An important step we took last December was to finally pass the resolution recognizing the Armenian Genocide. I was proud to be a part of this process, not only this year, but for many, many years. Proud to be a co-sponsor, very proud that it passed. That work has been completed, but there is more work to do. I remain committed to ensure that the Armenian people have the resources they need to develop a strong, vibrant country. But let me conclude by offering my profound gratitude to Armenian Americans for what you've done throughout this land, but particularly what you've done for Rhode Island. As friends and as neighbors, I salute you. Mek Parapnav, Chek Mornav. We will never forget. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Reid. Up next, we'll hear from Representative Laurie Trahan. 
Representative Trahan represents the third district in Massachusetts, which includes Merrimack Valley. In 2019, the Congresswoman became the first Portuguese American woman to be elected to Congress. She is a member of the House Education and Labor and House Armed Services Committees and offered remarks at last year's ANCA Eastern Region Banquet. She is also a member of the Congressional Caucus on Armenian Issues. Hello, I'm Congresswoman Lori Trahan. As you all know, April 24th marks the 105th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. I know we have to commemorate the anniversary a little bit differently this year, but I wanted to take a moment to join you all via video as we remember the atrocities committed against the Armenians at the hands of the Ottoman Empire. This is always a difficult day for so many in our community. However, I'm proud to say that this year's commemoration is the first since both chambers of Congress voted to formally recognize the Armenian Genocide as official U.S. policy. It was a truly remarkable and historic moment to cast my vote in favor of HRES 296 when it passed with overwhelming bipartisan support in the House last October. As a member of the Congressional Caucus on Armenian Issues, I'm honored to represent a strong, active Armenian community, and I will continue to work with them to ensure that their voices are heard in Congress. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Trahan. Our next statement is from Congresswoman Haley Stevens. Congresswoman Stevens is in her first term representing Michigan's 11th district. Her district includes a large segment of Michigan's Armenian community. Congresswoman St Stevens sits on the House Committee on Education and Labor and the House Committee on Science, Space and Technology, where she also serves as chairwoman of the Research and Technology Subcommittee. She joined the Congressional Caucus on Armenian Issues shortly after she was elected. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Haley Stevens. Today, we mark the 105th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, an unspeakable tragedy that claimed 1.5 million lives. Today, we remember those lives and we commit to not allowing a tragedy like this to ever repeat itself. Last year, I was so honored to co-sponsor House Resolution 296 to commemorate and to honor those lives and to recognize the Armenian Genocide. While I cannot be with you all in person today, I am looking forward to seeing you all very soon and you have my commitment and dedication every day as your member of Congress. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Stevens. I'm honored to introduce our next congressional friend, Jim McGovern, Congressman Jim McGovern represents Massachusetts second district, which includes one of the oldest Armenian communities in the United States, Worcester. He was first elected to Congress in 1996 and is now in his 12th term. Congressman McGovern is the chair of the House Rules Committee and a co-chair of the Congressional Executive Commission on China and of the Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission, both of which monitor, investigate, and advocate on behalf of the international human rights the rule of law and good governance. Congressman McGovern is a veteran member of the Congressional Caucus on Armenian Issues, one of the oldest members we have. Since I took office, I've been with you every year to remember and reflect on the meaning of the Armenian Genocide. And every year, our reflections on this horrific tragedy have been transformed into positive action, into working for the common good of our nation and fighting to stop similar tragedies in our own time. This year, our commemoration may be different, but in these difficult times, I see the spirit of the Armenian people all around us. Our country and our world are coming together to help our neighbors, colleagues, and friends. Our communities are rising to meet this moment with strength, courage, and perseverance. So today, as we remember the past, let us continue to take inspiration from one another and let us commit to continuing our work to fix the divides in our nation and in our neighborhoods between the rich and poor, the haves and have nots, those who have food and those who do not, so we can build a better future for all our children. I am thinking of each of you today as we commemorate the 105th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Thank you and God bless you and please be safe. Thank you, Representative McGovern. 
Our next message is from Representative Rashida Tlaib, who is in her first term representing Michigan's 13th district, which includes Southwest Detroit. She is the first Palestinian American woman to be elected to the U.S. Congress. Congresswoman Tlaib serves on the House Committee on Financial Services, as well as the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. She is also a member of the Congressional Caucus on Armenian Issues. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. I am so honored to represent the incredibly strong Armenian American community in 13 District Strong. Today, we honor and remember the lives lost 105 years ago during the Armenian genocide. We honor those lives by speaking truth to power every single day and by making sure that we know silence is never an option when those are neighbors, people, human beings are being targeted. So thank you so much to the incredible education and advocacy of the Armenian Americans in my district for including me and making sure that we never forget all the lives lost and never ever repeat history. Thank you so much. And that again, I am so blessed to represent you in the United States Congress. Thank you, Representative Tlaib. Finally, our last message is from Representative Chris Smith. Congressman Smith, elected in 1980, is serving his 20th term in the U.S. House of Representatives. He represents New Jersey's 4th District. Congressman Smith serves as a senior member on the House Foreign Affairs Committee and, is, and its ranking member on the Africa Global Health, Global Human Rights, and International Organization Subcommittee. He is the co-chair of the Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission, ranking member of the Congressional Executive Commission on China, and a longtime member of the Congressional Caucus on Armenian Issues. It was a privilege to co-manage debate in Congress last year on a strongly worded bipartisan resolution condemning the Armenian genocide and to have previously chaired two congressional hearings, one in the year 2000 and again in 2015. The appalling and well-documented facts speak for themselves. In 1915, there were about 2 million Armenians living in what was then the Ottoman Empire. They were living in a region that they had inhabited for 2,500 years. By 1923, however, well over 90% of these Armenians had disappeared. Most of them were dead. Shockingly, the government of Turkey continues to trivialize, rationalize, and deny the genocide, a cruel slap in the face of the Armenian people hindering reconciliation and healing. We will never forget. Thank you, Representative Smith. Thank you to all of our congressional friends who stand with us today. Similar tastes and culture and cuisine are not all that we have in common with our Greek friends. Both Armenia and Greece have suffered from continued persecution, oppression, and genocide at the hands of Turkey. In April 2016, the ANCA Eastern Region signed a Memorandum of Understanding with several, several Greek and Cypriot groups pledging to work together to undertake joint advocacy and public education initiatives on Armenian, Greek, and Cypriot issues. You will now hear from Endi Zemanides, the Executive Director of one of our closest coalition partners, the Hellenic American Leadership Council. Last year, we took a major step forward in the March for Justice with the Armenian Genocide Resolution. It's time for the next step. This year, the President of the United States must finally speak truth to Turkey. The Armenian Genocide, the Greek Genocide, the Assyrian Genocide are all facts. Turkey's whitewashing, Turkey's gag rule cannot erase those facts. The Hellenic American Leadership Council will stand and fight next to its brothers and sisters at the Armenian National Committee until justice is achieved. Yet another group that has a shared history of being victims of genocide, which was perpetrated by Turkey, are the Assyrian, Chaldean, and Syriac people. The ANCA Eastern Region also signed a memorandum of, under, of understanding with a demand for action in July 2016. A Demand for Action is a global initiative which advocates for the protection of Assyrian, Chaldean, Syriac Christians, and other minorities in the Middle East. The ANCA Eastern Region has worked closely with the Demand for Action on genocide recognition, support and security for Christians and other minority groups in the Middle East, territorial integrity and self-determination for our people and U.S. international aid. Steve Oshana, Executive Director of our Demand for Action, has a message that we would like to share with all of you. Hi everyone. I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy during these unusual times. 
With the passage of the genocide resolution in the United States, Congress has affirmed what every Armenian, Assyrian, and Greek American already knew. But it has also affirmed that our fight for justice has only yet begun. Armenia's enemies have stepped up their aggression, and now is the time to demand concrete action such as land returns, reparations, and an immediate cessation of hostilities in the Nagorno-Karabakh. On behalf of everyone at a demand for action, I would like to thank the Armenian National Committee and every single one of you for everything you do to bring justice to the victims of this genocide. In Defense of Christians is a nonprofit and nonpartisan human rights and advocacy organization based in Washington, D.C. IDC advocates for a Middle East in which the rights of every person are protected and respected regardless of religious creed and in which the ancient and diverse Christian and other religious minority communities of the Middle East thrive peacefully in their native lands. The ANCA has been working with IDC for more than five years. We are happy to share a message from Peter Burns, the Government Relations and Policy Director for In Defense of Christians. Hi, ANCA friends. April 24th is a sad and solemn remembrance for Middle Eastern Christians, but really for Christians all over the world. As we think about the Armenians, the Assyrians, the Syriacs, uh, the Maronites, the Greeks, and really all Middle Eastern Christians who were persecuted and brutally uh, suffered genocide at the hands of the Turks. This year our remembrance is going to be different uh, because Congress recognized the Armenian genocide in both chambers, and IDC was honored to work with the ANCA to see that happen. We hope that the administration will seriously consider recognizing the crimes of the Turks. The International Association of Genocide Scholars has repeatedly released statements in support of recognition of the genocide against Armenian, Assyrian, Pontian, and Anatolian Greeks. They have also spoken out against both Turkish state as well as supposed scholars who deny the Armenian genocide. Joining us today will be Professor Henry Terrio to share a message on behalf of the International Association of Genocide Scholars. Professor Terrio is the president of the International Association of Genocide Scholars, as well as Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs at Worcester State University. As we commemorate the 105th anniversary of the beginning of the Armenian Genocide, it is important for us to pause to reflect on how far the struggle for justice has come. For instance, just last year, both houses of the United States Congress recognized the Armenian Genocide as an undeniable historical fact, striking perhaps the final blow in the Turkish government's now clearly irrational effort to cover up this historical reality. But we cannot rest with such achievements. Even after a century, Armenians, Greeks, and Assyrians have still been denied reparations for the tremendous material and human harms that were done to them just a century ago. These reparations are crucial for the future of each community as a viable and vibrant part of the human race. But more than that, today, Turkey's government and military pursue the same kinds of human rights denying violence that were the hallmark of the genocide era. In Syria and elsewhere, they kill and harm civilians with impunity. It is my hope that the legacy of the Armenian Genocide will be finally to force a change to rehabilitate Turkey to become a human rights respecting and responsible member of the global community of nations. Founded in 1933, the Armenian Youth Federation is the oldest and largest Armenian American political youth group in the United States. The AYF has five pillars, social, cultural, educational, political, and athletic. We will now hear a message from the 2020 AYF YOARF Central Executive delivered by its chair, Kanar Chachaflian. Sireli Panagamner Yev Ungerner. My name is Kanar Chachaflian, and I am the chair of the Armenian Youth Federation, Youth Organization of the Armenian Revolutionary Federation, Eastern Region Central Executive. The AYF is honored to be working together with the Armenian National Committee of America Eastern Region during this weekend of April 24th to commemorate the 105th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. HITAD is one of our most important activities as an organization. We work together with sister organizations such as the ANCA, Hamaskain, Homenetmen, and ARS to advocate for social, economic, and political justice for Armenians in both Armenia and the diaspora. From silent protests 
to letter writing and phone call campaigns to public officials, to seminars and lectures, we educate our members, our friends, our representatives, and our communities about the history of the Armenian people, the importance of the Armenian genocide, and the safety and security of the modern-day republics of Armenia and Arsakh. The AYF brings Armenian youth of all ages together, regardless of their backgrounds, to focus on the advancement of social, cultural, educational, political, and athletic causes. These five pillars enable our members to flourish successfully as individuals and teach them how to lead their local communities. When we work together for our common cause with events such as this weekend, our collective presence is unstoppable. We look forward to the participation of our community during the virtual programming exclusive to the AYF tomorrow, and we hope everyone stays safe and healthy during these trying times. Thank you. The Armenian Relief Society was founded in 1910 in New York City. It is a nonprofit, independent, non sectarian, and non governmental organization, an NGO, a member of the United Nations with affiliate entities in 27 different countries serving the social, educational, health, and welfare efforts of the Armenian people throughout the world. The Armenian Relief Society promotes the teaching of the Armenian language and seeks to preserve the cultural identity of the Armenian nation. ARS provides humanitarian assistance and worldwide emergency relief to all communities in distress, Armenian and non-Armenian alike. ARS Eastern Region Board Member Heather Apigan Karafian will share a message with us today. 105 years ago, amid the upheaval of World War I, Christian Armenians faced the first genocide of the 20th century. On April 24th, Armenians around the world commemorate the Armenian Genocide the past century's first ethnic cleansing and systematic annihilation campaign perpetrated by the Ottoman Turks. The Armenian Relief Society joins in these commemorations, reflecting upon the many roles Armenian women played as mothers, educators, nurturers, survivors. On April 24th, we remember the one and a half million lives that were lost in 1915. We remember, but also demand that our voices be raised and heard and that justice be served for our martyrs, our saints. Though Turkey continues its campaign of denial, we stand strong as a nation and will continue to make our demands known until we reach a moral, righteous, and legally acceptable resolution. Today we are proud in declaring all we've accomplished over the past 105 years. In doing so, we've proven to the world that we could not be annihilated for we Armenians have not only survived, but have grown and prospered. We take pride in knowing that the Armenian Relief Society has played a significant role in our nation's survival. It is through the collective efforts of the Armenian Relief Society chapters and supporters that Armenian education and schools remain a priority, that cultural and social programs continue to flourish, that Armenian infants and orphans are cared for and that the Armenian people continue to thrive. We remain strong as an organization that works with the people and for the people and demand that our cause receive the just resolution it deserves. Thank you. The Hamaskain Armenian Educational and Cultural Society was founded on May 28, 1928 in Cairo. Hamaskain's goal is to increase the education of the Armenian people through the Armenian language and the Armenian spirit. To this end, Hamaskain functions in three directions. Tutor the new generations with a solid Armenian education, enhance adult education, develop Armenian studies. Hasmik Abrahamyan, chairwoman of Hamaskain Eastern Region, will be offering remarks for us today. <laughs> Նույնպես աշխարի ժողովուրդները կմնան իրենց քննագարաններուն մեջ։ Սակայն համաստկայինի արևելյան միասյալ նահանգներու շրջանային վարչության համար ապրիլ 24-ը։ Այն ամիսն է, երբ ամեն հայ թե գույս իր արմեհերում հոգվող եւ մտքով իրար կնիանա դոնելու 
մեծ եղերնի սրպասած նահադակներում միշազագը։ Ար համասկայինը, որբես թեղասպանութեն են ժողոբրած պեգոր, հասագարած և ուրջացած ամեն ուրեք, ինչպես չարենց կսե, ով հայ ժողովուրդ, կո միակ պրգությունը, կո հավակագան ուժի մեջ է։ Այսոր, այս անհնարին բայմաններու մեջ, միանալով համայն հայության հետ, համասկայինը դհիշադագ է և աղաղագելով գբահան չէ հայ սերունդներում համար, արդարություն և իրավունքներու ճանաչում, շնորագալություն։ Next, we will be hearing from the Armenian General Athletic Union and Scouts, better known as Hominitmen. Hominitmen believes in a strong mind, strong body concept, so they have provided Armenian youth with the moral, physical, and psychological education outside the school environment. They have also tried to teach the youth the richness of the Armenian culture and heritage, while at the same time preparing them to become outstanding law-abiding citizens in the countries in which they live. The first two Hominitmen Eastern Region chapters were formed in New York and Detroit in 1921. Yachbaid Aram Kaysarian, chairman of the Hominitmen Eastern Region, will be delivering a message for April 24th. On behalf of the Hominitmen Eastern U.S. Regional Executive, I call upon our scouts, our athletes, and all members to join all Armenians as we commemorate the 105th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. This year, we will not have the opportunity to see our scouts leading processions down the streets of our cities and towns. We will not hear the sound of drums echoing through our communities. Our churches, community centers, and government buildings will not be the places we gather to pray, to reflect, and to demand justice. Be not mistaken, we continue to march forward. Let our voices be heard around the world as we continue to raise awareness, demand recognition, and fight for justice for the Armenian Genocide. Հոմրիտմենի արևելիան միացյալ նահանքներու շրջանային վարջության անունով գոչ կուղ է մեր պոլոր եղբարներուն և կույրերուն և համայն հայության, հիշադագելու ծեղասպանության հարուրհինք ամիագը։ Մեր ներգավարակաները չեն ա թե եվ գարելի չէ հավակվիլ մեր եգեղեցիներուն և գետրոններու մեջ, ուր գաղոտենք, ուր գհիշենք ու գբահանչենք։ Թող մեր ծայները լսվի աշխարի չորս կոմ, գբահանչենք և իդի շարնագենք բահանչել մեր անմեղ We will be airing a segment on Armenian Genocide Education with the Genocide Education Project at 4 p.m. This evening at 7 p.m., we will have a segment hosted by New York Times bestselling author Chris Baljalian. In that segment, we will have messages from Tamar Gregorian, ANCA Eastern Region Communications Director, Adam Hamparian, ANCA Executive Director, Dr. Jermaine McAlpin, Chair of African and African American Studies at New Jersey City University, and Surpazan Anushavan Tenalian, prelate of the Armenian Apostolic Church Eastern Region. Saturday will be a day of Armenian Youth Federation youth activism beginning at noon. Sunday at 2 p.m. will be our local segment, which will be hosted by Aleko Eskandarian. It will include a montage of past April 24 events, a Western Armenian video, ANCA Eastern Region Executive Director Adam Balian providing closing remarks and a call to action video of ANCA Eastern Region activists. What Will Become of Us is a documentary produced by Stephanie Ayanyan. The film follows six Armenian Americans, famous and otherwise, as they navigate the 100th anniversary of the genocide, forging identities for the next 100 years. How can Armenian Americans honor their past while unshackling themselves from its trauma. Their interwoven stories build on one another to create a cohesive narrative where the past and future are in constant tension. This is not a film about genocide, but about how to thrive despite it. 
We would like to share a promotional clip of the documentary with you all. Genocide always casts a long shadow. Our place at the table of nations. In 1915, that place was nearly stolen from us. With Armenians, we do have this heaviness. I feel a responsibility to share that story in a way that doesn't feel as traumatic. This is a, a new era for us. Thank you for taking on this important topic in film, Stephanie. The film will be shown throughout the region on PBS stations. You can go to whatwillbecomeofus.com for a local broadcast schedule. You can also go to anca.org forward slash PBS to request a documentary as shown on your local PBS station. Thank you.